Hey guys, uh, hopefully there's, there's enough like coming in. Welcome to week 96 here on the Real DVD Watchers. I really need to start paying, paying attention to what weeks we're on, because most times I'm just guessing. Um, the DVD, because I totally spaced there. So the TV show that I've chosen to review today is something that my boss actually got me on because she said uh, if I hadn't seen it yet, she would fire me. <laughs> and uh, knowing, knowing, knowing Jay Wow, as I like to call her, uh, that's probably pretty pretty close to the actual thing. So, I watched the first season and I fell in love with it. It's such a, a unique take on family and puts a different spin on just basically the general mythos of what this deals with. And if you've been following me on Twitter, you probably know what show I'm going to, to review is. It's Sons of Anarchy se Season 2. Basically, what's going on, what this show is basically about, it's about this bi biker gang and this one guy named uh, Jax, who is, who is the son of the original leader of this biker gang, but now his stepdad, Clay, played by Ron Perlman, takes over, and just... Jax isn't really liking the, the direction that Clay is taking the, the, the bike gang in. Jax finds his father's uh, menu, his memoirs and reads them and understands the idea of what he truly started to set out. So for Jax, who's the vice president of, of the motorcycle club, called the Sons of Anarchy, it's kind of try, trying to get it back as to the way how it is, but he's needing friction with some of the other members, and of course Clay, because Clay knows how he wants to run, run this thing, and Clay expects it to be run a certain way. So, that's pretty much what the show's about, and also about, you know, people dealing with, like, relationships within within the Motorcycle Club, because the Motorcycle Club, Sons of Anarchy, is very much a family. This show is very much rooted in the idea of family, but also it shows the dark, gritty, gritty things that the, the bikers do. I mean, in the first season, they actually burn off this guy who screwed them over, he, because they all have Sons of Anarchy California tattooed on their back, and they actually burn off this uh, tattoo on this one guy's back. So, what's happening in this season is, it starts off, oh, this is going to be full, full of spoilers, just, you know, if you haven't seen Sons of Anarchy Season 2 yet, don't watch this review. Um, basically, what starts off is their, their one friend, Bobby, who went to jail for them, comes back because the uh, ATF chick cannot, can no longer hold him. So he comes back, and that night, uh, Gemma, who is the mother of Jax and wife to now Clay, uh, played by Katie Siegel, and she, she plays her character so well, gets raped by a whole bunch of... Um, White, white supremacists who are moving and trying to move out Sons of Anarchy. And the leader of the white supremacist mo movement is played by Adam Arkin, who is a great actor. If you've seen any of his other work, you totally understand. And his second-in-command, AJ, is played by the no none other than Henry Rollins. And so Rollins and a whole bunch of guys rape her to, to send a message to Clay, which is Gemma decides to keep it quiet. And so the overall arc of this, sto this storyline is, though, is that Jax is making drastic moves in order to change the gang for what he feels is the better. And so, lines are being drawn constantly. So many times, people who you think would be with one side aren't. I mean, Bobby, who, who you know, in the first season, I didn't really like his character because he was so rooted to Clay and what Clay did. In this season, though, he is very much an observer of what's happening. Bobby, I'm pretty sure what they did with him in prison... Bobby has a new out outlook, and so he's willing to see things through new eyes. And so to see him follow Jax and what Jax is trying to do, it's great. But also, you know, the, he does make ultimatums to Jax. He's like, you have to follow through through for this. He's like, you know what's good for the club. If you don't, you're done here. So it's really cool to see that, that aspect. But also, you know, dealing with, you know, Jax is now in love with Tara, who's, who's his doctor. And Tara's having to face ramifications of the sons always coming into her job because they're always beat up and stuff like that. And just her boss is seeing this. And mainly what happens is uh, the white supremacist plant this one car bomb. And Chibs, who's my favorite character, Chibs, uh, he's an Irish guy. He turns on, I'm sorry I don't really ha have names for actors. Um, but Chibs turns on the car, and he hears, hears this buzzing sound, and he realizes it's a car bomb, so he's trying to run out, it goes off, and so, when Chibs is in the hospital, and they decide to, you know, to, you know, like, like, send him out, he understands, you know, he, there's no security out there. If he goes to this different hospital, the white supremacist movement can just come in and just kill him every time they want, so Tara fakes a whole bunch of, of brain problems w with him in order to keep him there longer, and so she has to deal with that ramification, 
and just there's a whole bunch of backstabbing and plotting in this show, and it's really good. It's honestly kind of like like Sopranos in a way, except for me, the show is better than Sopranos mainly because I don't like whole gangs gangster thing. For for me, the biker gang thing it, it works really really well. And then there's Opie who's coming off, you know, dealing with his wife being murdered by Tiggs, who is also a member of the Sons, who and that was all orchestrated by Clay. So of course they're dealing with keeping that quiet, and. And just watching Opie go through this, pretty much this emotional roller coaster where he, he can't be around his kids. He, he's got his mom and his dad wa wa watching the kids, but also Opie's dad is in, is in the Suns, too. And so it's him dealing with that. But then Opie also finding love, love again in, w with, his porn, with his porn star, and I figure out what the hell her name is. And then it just all builds up to probably one of the most... Su one of the most best endings for this show. And it's such a punch to, to your stomach because... You just don't see it coming. I mean, I don't re really w want to ruin it for anyone in any regard, even if you have seen it. Because you all know how sensitive that ending was. It was just, oh my god, I was literally, I was literally speechless at, at the end of the season. It was so well orchestrated, the way how it all worked out all, all together. Um, and then apparently in the beginning of season three, the first episode was just like, <laughs> two, it's like your head explodes, like in scanners. Um... So, yeah, that's basically the overview of, se of Season 2. I'm pretty sure I left out little hints here and there, but really, I covered most of it. The acting in the season, again, is top-notch. Oh, my God. The show is created by, by Kurt Stutter, I think his name is, or, or Stutter. Uh, he created uh, he created The Shield, and then, then he went on to do this. And just, this show is so gritty and so violent and so real. It's on effect, so they're able to do something like this. It would, it would be interesting to see what they could do with something like on HBO, but I'm happy that it's still out there. Again, the acting is top-notch. I mean, like, Ron, Ron Perlman just knocks it out of the park as Clay. Katie Siegel, to see her, you know, as, like, Peg, Leela, and now Gemma. Oh, my gosh. She's quickly becoming one of my, one of my favorite female actress, actresses because she's just so be beautifully pure and and just wise when she has to be. But then when she has to turn on her mean streak, she is fucking scary. And I wouldn't want to meet her in a dark alley. And then, of course, the guy who plays Jax, Char Charlie Hunson, I think his name is, great, absolutely great as Jax, because, you know, he has this great cockiness about him, but then there's also this softness to, to Jax, which, which is really, really cool to see in a character that, you know, is in a Biker King, because he's just starting to be like, beer swinging assholes, but no, Jax is also very, very soft in some ways, and it's really cool to see that dynamic. I mean, then you have people, you know, like Kim Coates, who plays Tiggs, and Kim Coates, you know, I'm used to seeing Kim Coates as, as an asshole, you know, like, kind of pen, pencil dick kind of guy, but to see him as, like, this, this dirty guy who will just fuck anything and does these horrible things, you know, it's really, really cool to see that contrast in his character, because there's a lot of people in this show that you've seen in other things, and to see them go after different challenges. It's so great. Like uh, like Adam Arkin playing the White Supremacist Leader. He is so good. I mean, Adam Arkin normally picks, picks these soft roles. He doesn't have to be hard. But in this show, you know, some things require him to, like, put down his foot. And it's so great. And also Rollins. Oh, my God. Watching Rollins as a White Supremacist has probably been one of the uh, of the greatest things I've ever seen. Not that I'm saying white, white supremacy is cool at all. I'm just saying to see him go and be that scary and that mean and that in your face, oh. Rollins is a great actor, as most of you know, but this is just absolutely great. Uh, direction is, is is always good. Sometimes I wish I wish the gore was a little bit better in this show, though, but you know what? You, it's an FX show, and you can only do, do so much with TV, so... I'm not going to complain that that much about it. It's still a really great show. And just the characters are so well done. Aw, oh, Sons of Anarchy. If you haven't seen this show yet, please pick pick up the first season. It's so good. A lot of people watch it. I know I, I know they do. And like a lot of my friends, I mean. And just, oh, I'm in love with this show. If I, if I had to give season 2 a rating out of 10, it would definitely get an 8. The season is damn near perfect. It's better than the first season in, in my eyes. Just because you learn more, more about other characters and you get better in-depth as to how things work. And also, for me, wa watching the conflection between the gangs, sorry, l l like in the gang, is just absolutely perfect. It's so well-scripted and it's so well-placed because it's not too much at one point and it's not like you're like, go I want more. It's always the perfect amount of disharmony within the gang. It's absolutely great. So...
that's a review for season two of Sons of Sons of Anarchy. Uh, please check check it check it out, and I will catch you guys later some other time, either on my channel or on here. So, bye guys.